Now let's talk about what skills you're going to need to be a high performing analyst. And first on the list is an analytical thought process. When we talk about an analytical thought process, we're talking about a general affinity for math, not necessarily calculus or trigonometry formulas, but the kind of math that allows you to take a business challenge and turn it into an analytics approach that is rigorous, robust, however you want to say it. Uh, word problems in math tend to be a, a good example of this, uh, translating a situation, a few numbers, into an equation that can be solved and be able to explain exactly what the right decision is. Well, after that, I would say attention to detail is extremely important. As an analyst, you need to double check your work or triple check your work, whether it's your code or your Power BI file, whatever it is that's being presented, make sure it's accurate. Uh, doing sanity checks is a really good way to maintain a good attention to detail. What that means is basically stepping back and thinking, would a reasonable person expect this to be the case? Uh, if not, it could be that you've come across something very surprising, and that's great. That's why you do the analysis. But if it is very surprising, you definitely want to double, triple, quadruple check it to make sure there's not something else going on. And then a great option as well is to validate against other sources. If you're pulling some data and there's a report out there that has the same data, there's probably some way you can validate against it and make sure the two generally match up. All good ways to maintain good attention to detail. And this is critical because if your stakeholders come to uh, notice errors or uh, there's been attention to detail issues in the past, they're less likely to use your analysis to make decisions in the future. Then there's communication. This can be a real differentiator for you as an analyst. There are a lot of analysts who do a great job with the analysis, but then perhaps in their communication, they might get too technical to in the weeds is very common. And the stakeholder doesn't really get what they need out of it to make a, a data-based decision. Now, an analyst who can take a step back and really, if anything, explain the high level aspects of the methodology in a way a non-technical stakeholder can understand, but then really focuses on the insights and even more so the recommendations that come outside of that, that come from that analysis. That is a good analytics communicator right there. So focus on the recommendations rather than how you got there. If you're going to be an efficient analyst, I would highly recommend investing in learning how to code in analytics languages. These tend to be languages that are easy to learn. It's things like SQL and Python, um, R, SAS, or a few other options. This is going to dramatically increase your productivity because your code can work for you. You can schedule it and it's getting things done. It's sending out reports instead of you having to do that. And it's all automated. It also increases your flexibility. Uh, no more, well, this point and click tool doesn't have that option. Now, if you can dream it, you can code it. So there's a lot of flexibility there. And all, while you can create data science models from a point and click perspective and Excel or other tools, you'll have so much more flexibility and be able to do so much more with building your data science model if you do it in a coding platform like Python, R, or SAS. Well, a lot of people don't think about analytics as a creative career path, but it so can be in so many ways. When you're designing an interactive dashboard, you've got to have a good eye for layout. But even more so, I would say the creativity comes in every day when you take a business challenge and creatively come up with a way that you could use analytics to address it and craft an approach that is perfect for that business use case. A lot of people um, don't necessarily think about analysts as leaders, and I think a lot of it comes to the uh, fact that many analysts struggle with communication, keeping it high level. They want to get in the weeds, which creates a barrier with executives, or it can. Uh, but analysts make great leaders, especially if an organization is committed to making data-driven decisions. 
who better to make robust data-driven decisions than an analyst? Um, now, as an analyst, even as an individual contributor, you can be a leader. You can proactively look for analyses, projects, even leadership initiatives, anything that stands out as a way that your organization can uh, improve. You can be the one to make that improvement and to lead that change. And if you do that enough and you do that well enough, pretty soon your organization is going to start seeing you as a leader and that could open up some more formal career opportunities. Project management is also important. Uh, stakeholders want an analyst who they can rely on to get a certain analytics deliverable, a data pool, a dashboard, a model build in the timeline that they commit to. Uh, so being a good project manager and being able to manage usually multiple analytics projects at the same time is expected and it's important. And similarly, sometimes you'll get, in fact, oftentimes as an analyst, everybody wants data these days. Everyone wants their analytics project. So you'll often find yourself in a situation where there's more requests than time to complete the request. And that's where you've got to be a good prioritizer. You've got to remind stakeholders what's on your plate and help them prioritize. And hopefully everyone will agree to prioritize the projects that would seem to drive the most value. A lot of times uh, you'll get a lot of nice to know requests, but not necessarily need to know. And so you can work with your stakeholders to make sure those need to know, know requests uh, get prioritized, the ones that are actually going to potentially change the decision that would be made depending on your analysis. Lastly, and this is important for any type of role, is you've got to have a solid work ethic, especially as you're learning analytics, but even beyond. You're going to run into coding errors. It's just a fact of life if you're coding as an analyst. Uh, and unexpected results, which is where the sanity checks come in, and sometimes when you run into those, it requires persistence to find a solution. So work ethic is so important. These are just, I would say, the main skills that are required to be a high-performing analyst.